Hello. Um, I'm going to do something different today. I just picked this uh, Gigge uh, Pextra or P Extra um, that was uh, gifted to me a while ago by someone from uh, Tool uh, with some other locks. And I didn't have a key for it, so uh, I just picked it. And I found out it's uh, pretty mastered uh, when I gutted it and put back together. And well, uh, among, among other things, I forgot one wafer. And then I was th uh, thinking, so I, I was wanted to put it back. But now I'm thinking, let's see if I can remove uh, the mastering as much as possible. Uh, uh, because mastering usually makes uh, a lot easier to pick and I like the best challenge I can get so let's see if I can uh, get some master wafers out of this thing and if I can pick it then um, I just picked it um, off camera and now I'm going to gut um, gut it so let's first remove the circlip and I hope I can succeed without closing the lock again there we go um, I noticed there was uh, some kind of hole in the plug somewhere I think it's this one but to be sure I'm going to try and shim it. I just got a shim and I forget where I forgot where I left it. Ah, there it is. And maybe this is helpful for someone who uh, has a mastered lock and wants to uh, get rid of the mastering. Because you can't just remove every wafer without uh, without thinking because you then uh, I'll show you later then you have uh, the risk of um, having springs below the shear line uh, let me see there there we go uh, let's cut it first and then I'll, I'll, I'll show the rest That's an anti-drill, let's put that here. And that is as well. Can I get that out? Oh, let's first get rid of those two passive pins because I'm only going to lose them if I don't get them out right now. I don't have a key. I might, I might have to help them a little bit. They're a bit shy. Stack one isn't mastered, but the second one is. I think. Oh no, it isn't. Maybe that's where the wafer is from. Three, four, that's a master wafer, let's help, let's help that pin, hmm? 
don't have to be scared. There we go. Stack five. Oops, you shouldn't be there. There you go. And the last one isn't mastered. Let's get the driver pins out. Shim. Tiny master wafer. Look, that's the one I was missing in position two. And also this one. A barrel on four. spring doesn't want to come out well, let's go to the other side because it's easier to get to pin five and six from the back six very small spool come on And finally, a small spool on five. There we go. Now we can have a look at the mastering and what we can remove. First, um, I'm going to put the key pins back in. like that and now we can see um, for instance um, if I would just put in, uh, in five I would just put the spool in without the big master wafer um, let's close up first a bit you can see that pin five is going quite deep should I just put the spool in without the master wafer that driver pin would be below shear and because of that the spring will be below shear as well so if I put tension on the core of course the spool won't bind because it's below shear completely and if I pick the other stacks and I just five is um, left, there's nothing stopping me from turning the plug except this very flimsy spring, and that will get ruined and I'll have a, uh, a broken lock. Someone is in a hurry. So, stack five will have to keep the master wafer because now nothing will be uh, below shear so that's the theory and now I'm just going to I'm going to put this back um, no this you can go back in and the spool is going back keeping six can go back in as well now we're going to look at every stack uh, 
if I if it's safe to uh, remove the mastering so there isn't any mastering in one as you can see that's above shear the driver two has a very thin master wafer but if I just put in the uh, the driver it's above shear so this one will be safe to leave out. Taking it out for now. And I'm removing the wafer to there. So I can so I know I can leave it out. Then we go to stack three. That is a very close one. And to be fair, I don't dare to leave that one out. Um, I don't know how much m uh, margin th there is between the the plug and the housing, but if it's a little bit too much, I might ruin the spring. So I'm leaving that wafer in. Stack number four, the barrel. If I put that one in, well, look at that. It doesn't even want to go in. Uh, that's funny. Maybe it's because well, there is some over milling there. Maybe this barrel is wider than the, the hole. Uh, and it can only drop in here because of... No, that's not it. it. Yeah, that, that's, that's got to be it. So I think it will be safe. Yeah, it really doesn't want to get in. It will be safe to leave that master wafer out. So let's move that. And stack five, we already looked at that. That what isn't safe to leave out. So we can leave two wafers out and it will leave us with uh -huh. let's zoom uh, focus on that again that will leave us with uh, mastering wafers on three and five so let's put this back together and then I'm going to pick it. Key pins are already in here. Let's see if I can drop the wafers in as well. That makes assembly a bit easier. One, three. And if it doesn't want to, I'll just... No. That doesn't work. Okay, uh, let's put them in here. I'm going to start in the back with a five. Oops, those springs are really flimsy. Let's, let's change the focus just a little bit so you can see more. <laughs> there. Start on five. Um, and I'm starting with the spool. And then I'm adding the wafer. There you go. What I'm doing is I'm pushing the driver in the hole, pushing the spring down, and I use the follower to push against it and it's, it's it gets stuck so it won't uh, drop out again and then I can push the driver down with my tweezers 
number six. Little spool. All right. Number four. Start with the spring. That's in place. Get the first part in, clamp it down with my follower and push it down with the tweezers. Stack three. Ta da! Spool first. And the master wafer. I'm putting it up there, line it. Because this is a little bit smaller, it's harder to grab onto. There, I'm pushing it down and it's on a position. Two. Just a standard steel anti drill pin. There we go. Here you can see I'm pushing against the driver pin with uh, the follower and that prevents it for, from uh, getting out again and then I'm pushing it down and it's in place. And then the last one. Voila. As you can see, this is the hole I'm a bit scared of. I don't think the pins will fit in there, but to be safe, I'm still going to shim. If you're not certain about uh, what's in a lock or if there are any trap holes, you always try to shim. It will save you from a lot of trouble. There we go. Now for the plug, let's put the anti-drill pins in again. And of course the passive key control pins on the side. There we go. Also because I don't have a key Shimming is extra uh, wise because if you look at that, you can see nothing is at shear. So if a driver falls into the wrong uh, hole, your lock is bricked. I'll have to uh, pick out of it. Mm -hmm. If you can. Uh, I'm going to align it like this because that hole won't be in the way then, just that little rich but the shim should prevent anything from falling down into that there we go remove the shim close the lock put back huh that uh, wafer I uh, was missing was still out well, whatever I don't need it we just checked uh, put the C-clip back on and now I have a GG P extra with only two master wafers all right so it's in the vise now let's see if I can pick it Using quite some tension because somehow I get nicer feedback that way. 
but I do try to release some while I'm setting pins to this binding. A little bit of movement. One is a spool and it was bindings and now it's set but two dropped. There we go. Now I think six is binding so let's slowly release some tension. Okay, something dropped. Two again. That's okay. We'll just set it again. There we go. Now, let's have a look. What could be is that everything is in the overmilling now, or some pins, and they just need a little tap. Can I find something that binds? Six needed a tap, five a tap, not sure about five, so let's check the rest first, there we go, one needed a tap out of the milling and we're open. So let's cut this, of course you already know what's in there but doesn't hurt to show it again. Mm -hmm. This out of the way. Zoom. There we go. Now, first I'm going to remove the circlip again. Ah, it snapped back. I don't want to accidentally close the lock because I'll have to pick it again. But I'm getting there. There we go, that's the circlip. Let's insert the shim and got this real quick. What I'm thinking of now is that the cam was quite hard to remove as well. But could have shown that as well to teach something, but well, too late for that now. Um, follower. Let's do this. Oh, anti drill. Another anti drill. Side pins. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Or not. There you go. Just needed a little nudge. Um, Starts. Yeah, let's start with one. Standard keeping. These keepings are very round. It's the wafer. That was still in there, of course, on three and on five. Four first. Ta-da! Five, 
first the wafer and the key pin in there and six is last let's get the driver pins I'm going to start with six Get the spring as well. Oh, these springs are so annoying to get out. Uh -huh. Five. Cute little spool as well. An annoying spring. So, go to the other side. Let's get rid of that shim. And then we go to one. to the standard driver three oops there it is <laughs> including the <laughs> spring that didn't want to come out there we go and four the barrel. Let's get the spring as well. Let's show some detail. First the plug. Here you can see the over milling and the nasty keyway. But I don't know if you can see that, but you can pick through this oh, through this wording so it looks worse than it is uh, you can just go from the bottom and up now let's show you a close-up of the pins so all standard key pins And GG spools there, and a nice barrel. So that's the GG P extra picked and gutted. Thank you for watching, and I hope uh, it was helpful for someone. If it was, let me know. It's, uh, I like that. Have a nice day.